Alright, Cball 63 welcome back. What's that word, gang? I'm back. Yeah, man. Last interview did some numbers, man. I've been seeing you everywhere, man. You know? Shit. So now, you're doing music. Definitely, man. You know what? I just got done wrapping up a new video, too, man. Yeah. Still trying to remix. It's on the way, man. Y'all been waiting for it. That bitch finna drop. I just got done wrapping that up, man. So stay tuned. The lyrics to that song is uh wild. <laughs> For real, that's what the fans want, so I'm giving them something to listen to. Definitely, definitely. Do you feel like this music plays a role in a lot of the violence and shit, bro? Like, I know I probably asked that question before, but... Yeah, like I was gonna say, you definitely asked it before, but, yeah. I mean, we grown. Music play a part in it, but motherfuckers make their own decisions, their own move, for sure. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let me ask you a question. You know, the difference between a regular artist and an artist with a lot of shit going on in the street. Do you feel like the fans would still fuck with you if you was a regular nigga? I mean, it depends. It depends on the music. If the music hard, they fucking with it. But personally, me, like, no, they like the, they like the story. You know what I mean? They, right. Like, they like the movie. So it's really just like they so infatuated about the drill scene or just the way we moving, you see what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Yeah, because if you was just like a regular nigga, like C-Ball, came from a regular family, you know, you, you just a nigga trying to rap, you know, you would still be trying to, you know, Facebook promote and just have regular views like a regular nigga, you know, trying to make it. But because you got a backstory, your KI's uncle and all this shit with everybody, you know, I think you got a bigger platform now. Now you just yeah, come out of nowhere play, rapping. Play, uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, so now one thing I want to ask you about, you know, what's the difference in Chicago now than, you know, before you got locked up? Uh, now, man, it's more violent. It's more ruthless. No structure, no respect for no motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? Like, back then, it was a lot of structure. It was a little peace. It was a little love. It was an understanding. Right. But now, all that shit out the window. Motherfucker don't care about nothing. Y'all see how many kids got killed, man? Like, right. kids stay getting killed. More, more kids got killed than the right target. So I'm like, <laughs> shit crazy, man. Niggas relentless out here. Right. Now, do you feel like, um, you know, the kids are the ones doing a lot of the acts of violence, they say nowadays, though, you know? Yeah, but that's because they don't got no guidance. And plus, the motherfuckers that's around ain't teaching them shit no way. So, I mean, this is all they know. Yeah, do you feel like uh, a lot of the old heads maybe using them as send offs and shit like that? Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, probably to their own advantage a little bit. For okay. sure, for sure. Yeah, I'll say that. Okay, definitely, definitely. Okay, so one thing that's been going crazy in the media right now, man, DJ Academics did an interview with 21 Savage, and. 21 Savage said he didn't know that Doug and Dirk had been beefing and the whole, you know, GDBD war story with the, you know, O Block 300 and the, you know, Tukaville. You know, he said he didn't realize that was going on. And he had already told Duck he was going to do the record. But then he said if he would have known, he wouldn't have did the record. How did you feel about that? Do you feel like that was cap? Or? Come on, man. Y'all know what's going on, man. That shit was definitely cap. 21 know what the fuck he was getting into, bro. Like, no cow. He knew what the fuck was going on. He knew who the fuck Duck was. He knew who Dirk is. You see what I'm saying? So, he wasn't, he wasn't blind to what was going on. At the end of the day, he felt like that was his time to get in. So, that's all that was. Help boost his, his views up, his his fan base, all that shit, man. That, right. that shit he, he told him was cap, bro. Right. Right. Straight up. So, do you feel like... Now, how do you feel with all these global rappers, you know, kind of, you know, riding the coattail of, like, you know, certain artists, you know, even though they have nothing to do with the situation? I mean, I don't feel no type of way about it. It is what it is. It's just, it's for us now to just get on our shit. It's right. Ten toes, you know what I mean? Duck go, man. I repeat to my brother, man, but, you know, his legacy live on, man. We still living, so it's on us, man, to stand hard, to come hard, to stand on our own, you like, and continue pushing what we push and push our music out there. Let them see us. Our side of the show, man, for real. So they right. can know what's going on. Right, definitely, definitely. Okay. Now, I know you and Dutch, you've been going crazy, man. You know, you've been telling me about it, you know. Um, have y'all hit the studio yet? Oh, yeah, man. Cho, that's my fucking brother, man. Yeah, we definitely, uh, we be in the studio for sure, for sure. You know, we working on something, low key, so y'all just got to stay tuned, man, for real. What's it like being in the studio with that nigga? Because I know he freestyles like straight off the dome. I got like three hits with him. <laughs> hey, that man choked, man. I ain't gonna lie. Bro, the last 
he got it, man. You feel me? Like he can yeah. put a hook together real fast. A hit on the hook, yeah. the song. That man, the fucking dog. So motherfuckers need to tune in to tap in with FBG Dutchie, man. For real, y'all trying to get them hooks, boy. Bro, go crazy. He got it. And put your shit together. Oh point two seconds. Four yeah, Dutchie and Wooski gonna be on my album, man. I think you gonna be on there too, shit. Oh man, that's what's up. Man. <laughs> definitely, you know, it's all love. I'm definitely yeah, fucking with you. Yeah, I got an album with all three. Y'all gonna be on that shit. Okay, so now. What do you got coming out? You know, the fans want to know, you know, what do you have coming out on the music end, man? Are we going to hear any new mixtapes? Yeah, I got a mixtape dropping, man, for real. And it's called The Real Voice, bro. Y'all okay. stay tuned. It's definitely for the drop. Maybe I get like a couple weeks, man, you know. Like I said, I just got done wrapping up a video. Okay. One of the songs that's going to be on there, man. So y'all stay tuned. Ball Talk finna drop that video. Should be dropping at any time. Definitely, definitely. 6347, you know, uh, can you talk about you know, what made you guys start saying it like that? Uh, 6347, man. That was the spot. That's where, that was the trap. You know, that was actually Tav crib, BT OG, man. That was about Shreve Mama crib, like. Okay. And shit, for real, for real. That's where everything really took off at. The, the plan started coming together, you know what I mean? So that's where, back when the FBG movement started, but like, shit, that's what happened at, in that crib. It started taking off right there, 6347, for real, like. That's a staple in the hood, man. For real. Okay. Yeah, I see uh, Young and uh, L's got the chain and shit, you know? For sure, for sure. Fool them iced out, ain't it, man? Yeah, definitely <laughs> iced out. I heard it in a couple songs, too. I think uh, Duck and Dutchie's song, 6347. For sure, forever. You know? Definitely. Most definitely. Okay, now one more thing I want to ask you, bro. Uh, you know, R. Peter can't get right, man. How did he get his name? How did he get the name Get Right or Can't Get Right? Because when I was around him, it was Get Right, but I didn't know it was Can't Get Right. No, but I know it's the last to get right with you. So I don't know, man. I don't know. For real. I, don't, I can't tell you how he got that name. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Shit. I always thought it was because of the nigga up in the, uh, up in the movie Life with Eddie Murphy and uh, Martin. <laughs> they call him get right or can't get right. Oh, man. I don't know. But look fool to get right. Get right with a motherfucker for sure. Definitely a legend, man. <laughs> shit. It was always fun when I was around, bro. He was always full of good energy. Yeah, all type man. of shit, you know? Yeah, it was the last something else, man. I miss it. Look crazy, yeah. Most definitely, most definitely. I remember he cut his dreads, too. Shit. But, yeah, definitely. All right, cool. Appreciate this interview, you know. For sure, man. Yeah, motherfucker watching, boy. Tune in, man. Go subscribe to my channel, man. C-Ball 063. Oh, yeah, you got a YouTube channel. Definitely, for sure. Go run them numbers up, man. My shit at 83 subscribers. You how the fuck is that? Run them bitches up, man. Run them numbers up, man. The, the more y'all run it up, the more visuals get dropped. For sure, that. Most definitely. All right.